guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dori, I'm a teacher of English and today I want to give you an IELTS crystal clear plan in seven steps. So, let's go right into it. The first thing you need to decide is, since you know that you have to take the IELTS exam, is if you need to take the general or the academic version. The general is for those of you who want to live or uh, work in another country, an English-speaking country, and the academic version is for those of you who want to study in an academic um, environment in an English-speaking college or university. So step number one will be, if you're interested in the academic version, you should decide what, what kind of bound score you need from the university of your choice. And if you're interested in the general version, you need to decide, you need to know which bound score you need from the company, from the employer, from the visa requirements. You need to know what bound score you need for the general version as well. Well, now that you know your bound score, let's just say, I know that you want to start preparation right away, take the exam and get over with it and get rid of anything uh, that has to, of everything that has to do with it. However, it doesn't really work that way because I suggest knowing beforehand where you stand in relation to the bound score you, you, you need. And what do I mean by where you stand? I mean, first of all, your communicative level of English and then your grammar and vocabulary level of English. Because let's be honest, if you need a seven overall bound score uh, and your level is at about a five, it's not easy to go from a five to a seven without improving your level of English uh, as a whole and grammar, vocabulary and communicative skills as well. Let's start with a communicative level of English. This is essential for both writing and speaking in English for the IELTS exam and it shows how well you can communicate and express yourself both in spoken and written form. Not necessarily in an advanced way but in a simple, efficient and to the point kind of way. It shows your fluency in uh, the speaking examination and also your way, uh, your correct way of expressing yourself in the written examination while being clear and to the point of what you want to say. So let me give you a personal example. I'm currently, uh, in order for you to understand better what I mean, I'm currently learning Italian. So in reading and uh, listening, I'm pretty good. I understand almost everything. However, I absolutely suck at writing and speaking. I cannot speak in Italian, not at all. English comes out uh, of my mouth every time I try and I cannot express myself in written form either. So my communicative skills are really low. If this is you in English, you understand almost everything in reading and listening but you have a problem uh, with fluency, with expressing yourself both in spoken and written form, what do you need to do then? What you need to do is to stop acquiring more information, stop learning new things. What you need to do is to try to actually start using what you already know in practice. Start writing, start expressing yourself with the words you already know, with what you already know, no matter uh, the level of it. Start expressing yourself. Start speaking with what you already know, no matter how simple it is, it doesn't matter. You need to start somewhere to improve your communicative skills. Now, if your communicative level of English is more or less the same with your reading and listening uh, skills, then you need to assess this level as a whole. And why is that important? Because how are you going to understand the difficult scientific vocabulary of academic reading texts if your level is not equivalent uh, for, to that, if you don't have vocabulary knowledge that is, is a wide range of it so as to be able to understand it. If you're a four, let's just say, it's not easy to go to six just like that. You have to improve your level of English as a whole, especially for academic reading. The same goes with listening and the same goes with writing. Even if you want to be simple, you have to know the correct grammar usage in order to express yourself in those sentences that you're going to write. If your level of English is more or less a five and you need a seven and you just start practice tests right away, you're going to be frustrated in the long run because in your results there will always be a difference. You will never get that seven if you don't improve on the side your weaknesses in both grammar and vocabulary and the, the right way, the way you need, to, you need them for IELTS in order to be able to express yourself and understand what a text is all about. 
practice tests are not going to improve your level. So according to the Common European Framework of Reference Scale, which is this one, you can see that um, this that IELTS stands a little bit in the middle. 5.5 up until 6.5 is more or less a B2 level and then 7 up until 8 it's advanced level 8 to 9 of course it's more or less proficiency level these are approximate values but this scale is quite handy for you to see where you stand so how do you check your level according to this scale come with me on my screen and i'll show you so guys here we are on my screen this site is the first site that i want to show you is cambridge it's from Cambridge English Language Assessment. I'm going to put the, all the links down below in the description box so you can find them and check them out for yourself. So the first one is from Cambridge here. And if you scroll down, it says discover your level of English with our quick free online tests. And it has general English for schools, business English, young learners, four categories. In my opinion, you should go with general English in relation to IELTS. And I think the results will be in the common European framework as we've been talking about. I'm not sure though. Either case, it's for free. So you can totally do the test, check it out and see for yourselves. Now, another thing that I want to show you, which again is for free, is from British Council. Here we are. There's, you scroll down a bit. Discover your current English level, take our multiple choice tests in minutes. Uh, but again, again, it's for, it's for free. Here it says free online English test. But in order to have access to that, you have to log in to access the level test. Well, it's for free, so it's not a big deal in my opinion. Again, you can totally check it out. And the last one I want to show you that I found, it's again from Cambridge. But this time you have to pay for this placement test because it says here try our free online demo to get a good idea of how the Cambridge English placement test works and what the test sites look like. So it's a free online demo. So in my opinion, you will have to pay in order to do this kind of placement tests. If you're interested in that, I will put the link below uh, as well. So I chose these three sites because they're very well known, uh, official and everything. Uh, but I'm sure if you Google English placement test for free, you might come across lots of other results for yourselves. So check it out a little bit. But whatever you choose, you must know where you stand in relation to the band score you need. Step number three. Now that you know what your level of English is, more or less, now that you know your communicative skills, now that you know where you stand uh, in relation to the scale and the, I, uh, the IELTS bound score you need, now you're going to tell me that you want to start practice tests right away. And of course you should, but before that, I have a vital step for you, which is to familiarize yourself with the different task types of the exam, to know before you start doing practice tests, to know exactly what, the, what this exam is all about. Some people start right away or even go and take the exam right away without even knowing what it entails. Um, it's going to be really time consuming and really difficult and confusing if you don't do this step first. Reading alone and listening have numerous different task types and the instructions change them even, uh, even if you read the instructions. Uh, uh, one single task can change according to its instruction. For example, yes, no, not given, true, false, not given, they are similar but the letters change them. So you have to familiarize yourself with the exam and the different task types of the exam and also the strategy you need to follow for each and one of them because this is important as well. You need to know which tasks follow the order of the texts, which ta in academic reading, which do not. And in general, you need to know what you're going to face because in this way, you're going to be confident, less, less anxious, and you will know what you will be doing. Step number four, after you have a clear idea what the exam is all about and what the different tasks are all about and what they're going to ask you, now, yes, now is the time to actually start practicing with practice tests. However, as I used to say many times in my older videos, almost 10 years ago that I created this channel, doing practice tests alone is not enough. I'm sorry to tell you that, it is not. 
half of the most important work happens after your practice test is corrected and you actually study deeply your mistakes. It's ex extremely important because there's no point in doing practice test after practice test without realizing what you have done wrong. If you don't understand your mistakes, you're bound to make them again. So, when you get your first practice test corrected, go and study deeply, especially if you self-study for IELTS, go and study the mistakes, why you made that choice. Almost all uh, preparation books with practice tests, all of them have explanations of why this one is the correct answer, so study deeply why and try to understand it. The same with listening. Listen to the transcript, this part of the transcript again. Try to understand why you chose this one and not the other one. And only in this way will you be able quickly and efficiently to understand the sometimes illogical logic of IELTS. And only in this way will you be able to actually improve your score. Because, because after some time you will see that your mistakes are repeated, the logic, there is a pattern in your mistakes and you will be able to avoid it in the future and move on. What I'm telling you, it might be boring, it might be time consuming, yes, I understand that, but it's the most efficient way and the most effective way for you to understand your mistakes and not to repeat them uh, gradually, of course. So yes, practice does make perfect, it's only natural if you're consistent with something and you keep practicing, you, you're bound to get better, but not just any practice with IELTS, the right kind of practice, the smart practice, the, the one that will show you how to move forward. And the only way to do that is by studying and learning from your practice tests. Number five. This step is vital, especially if your level of English is not in, in vocabulary and grammar, is not yet equivalent to the bounce score you need. Along with your practice, start working on your weaknesses you know you have in grammar and vocabulary. And uh, I mean, don't start memorizing words that never worked. Research has shown that you have to see a word at least eight times before you're able to recognize it, understand it, let alone use it. So, no, don't do that. Start with things you like. Uh, TV series, movies, uh, YouTube videos that you enjoy watching, reading articles on things that you like and start keeping a journal with, the, with new words that you would see yourself in the future actually using. Write examples with, with them, use them in context, use them in your speaking. Only then will you be able to actually acquire new vocabulary. There is no other way, only by actually using it. And of course, the same goes with grammar and your weaknesses. Try to, to improve the things that you know you are weak on. So learn things in context. If you're not 100% sure the way a word is used, don't use it. Just be clear and straightforward. That's why in my YouTube shorts, I don't have only IELTS tips. I also have uh, grammar questions, vocabulary, in order for you to improve your level of English as a whole. Step number six, IELTS is not only about the exam. You probably need IELTS because you're going to study in an English-speaking country, so you're going to need English for your daily communication and for your studies in order to write as is at the university or whatever. So it doesn't hurt you to actually improve your level of English overall for your future in the long run. So again, you have to make English part of your daily life. Again, start with reading books in English, articles on the things you like, start watching TV uh, in English and movies and everything. Start to think in English even by simple uh, thoughts at the beginning, especially if you don't have a speaking partner. For example, instead of saying, uh, I have to do the laundry in your mother tongue, say it in English, even in your mind or out loud, speak English, make it part of your everyday life, even if you have to speak uh, by yourself in your house and people think you're crazy. This will definitely help you acquire the fluency you need and be much more confident and improve your level overall. Don't translate from your mother tongue, just use the things you know. Step number seven, and probably one of the most important ones, trust me. It has to do with your attitude. 
because I remember even 10 years ago that lots of students sent me messages how frustrated they were, that they were stuck at, um, at a bound score, that they didn't understand the logic behind an academic reading, that it was uh, an impossible exam and everything and everything. So let me tell you this, whining and nagging about what you have to do, trust me, is not going to get you far. You have to actually find a way to enjoy the process. Complaining is never the solution to anything. Try to enjoy the preparation as hard as it sounds. See IELTS like a quest, like a video game quest that you have to conquer in some kind of way. Your attitude will make an or break your result. If, you, if you're constantly angry at your band score, at your preparation, at what you have to do, um, this is going to be the result of more anxiety in the future and on the day of the exam. However, if you try to see IELTS like the foundational stepping stone towards your future studies or your future life, then you will be more likely to succeed easily and be happy during the process. Besides, acquiring more knowledge and more experience is always a good thing. So, try to enjoy the process. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it did, please do consider like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well. And as always, good luck with your exam!